Hey YouTube, Joshua the Window Cleaner here and today I'm in my garage and I'm going to be teaching you how to build a Ren Tuck Mow. And if you don't know what a Ren Tuck Mow is, go to my TikTok and you can see me using it on there. And also I'll show you real quick, it is this tool here that you see and then I'll kind of zoom in on it for you. This is the Ren Tuck Mow here. I created and designed this myself in my garage i'm going to be building one of these the reason why i call it the rent tuck no if you don't know already is the rent bar here that you see is the rin and the tuck is the tucker brush and then the mow is obviously the mowerman handle and then you see there how i have two switches one for the the pencil jets and then one for the rinse bar control both of them you can have them both go at the same time or you can choose which one you want according to your pressure that's why i made this uh but yeah so i hope you enjoy the video of watching me make this all right so first i'm going to explain the things that you need to get you can get this jb weld here uh straight from AutoZone is where i got it from i have two zero switches here Okay, you have the uh, three connector here, and then these three of the three connections. This is what you'll need. You'll need probably about a foot and a half of hose, roughly, to be able to do this. Um, and then you'll need the tucker connector here that comes with the brush. You'll need the screws that come with it. Sometimes that these brushes already come with the pencil jets, but I'm gonna be using the pencil jets um, on here, and I'm gonna be installing all new hose and everything. That way, um, it's all good to go, and it's gonna look really good because it's gonna have all blue hose on it. So you wanna make sure you have the Tucker Hybrid brush. You can use any brush if you want, just as long as it has the screw part on the back. But the important thing to know is that you won't need the swivel uh, connector here anymore because you have the swivel here on the Mowerman Accelerator 2.0 handle. So what I'm gonna be doing here is I'm gonna be plastic welding this piece to this piece. So I'm just gonna be molding and shaping this piece here uh, to get it the right angle and I'll use my other one because that was actually one thing I had to get right that I actually had to adjust a couple times. So you wanna make sure before you put the JB weld on there at the very end, you wanna make sure that your angle is right. So use it for a day or so, um, cause the plastic's gonna hold pretty good, but you want the JB weld over the top of it just to make sure, just to give it a really good bond. So um, I would recommend you plastic weld this and then try to figure out that angle and just keep heating it up whenever we get to that point. I'll show you how it is on this part. You see how that angle is. The angle is super important that you get right, right here. But that's why I made it kind of a little bit less plastic right here so that I could just heat it up and bend it how I wanted to. But you can see now it's super strong and you know, you're know you good to go here. And I've, I've tried this out and uh, the plastic probably will hold up for about two or three weeks, but you really want to put the JB weld on it to give it a solid um, grip so that you don't have to worry about it breaking off on the job if you're using it. All right, so now you wanna make sure that your uh, plastic welder, cause you will need a plastic welder for this. And I talked about that in a couple other videos. It's really good and when you're doing window cleaning. I would have a plastic welder cause tools are gonna break, things are gonna happen, you're gonna wanna be able to fix them. So I would highly recommend you go ahead and get you a plastic welder. So now I've already heated this up. I'm gonna turn it on its max setting now. I actually put it in the middle to heat it up a second ago, but I've actually had it on for a little bit, just getting it warmed up because it's really easy to use once you've warmed it up for about five minutes. So the first objective here is uh, gonna be that you'd have a fan. So turn a fan on and make sure that you're blowing the smoke away from you and have a mask on if you possibly can. Uh, or the garage door open or something like that would be just fine. You're gonna be breathing this stuff in. So the objective is to, I'm gonna make two cuts right here with the plastic welder. Now that this is connected just a little bit, 
you kind of got something to bite onto. So then what you do is you just kind of hold it like that. And then you just start plastic welding this piece together just so that you can hold it together. And this is, this is part of the craft though of it. You know, you have to be a craftsman and be able to have a lot of patience and just sit here and kind of play with the plastic and mold it together. And, you know, take your time with it. Don't get too much in a hurry. Just know that you're trying to make something that's gonna save you a lot of time in the long run. And that's what I've done. I just, I was like, man, I wanna make this tool. It's gonna make it a lot quicker in the long run. So, now I'm gonna teach you to do it. Now the big, big, huge, important thing here is that you don't wanna cross this line right here. You do not wanna cross that line. So, you just wanna make sure that you can use all this plastic here. The springs don't matter, none of that matters. But you can use all this plastic here. And then you'll start to, uh, cause this'll, whenever I start to mold this, I'm not gonna show you this part cause it's gonna take me like an hour. But I'm gonna have to mold all this. So I'm just gonna be pushing this plastic just like you see me do right here. Pushing that plastic together and kind of molding it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. right but the weld is crap on it so I'm gonna make it look really nice and push all that plastic like you see me do here push all that plastic right there over to that side but you can see that the angle is the same angle as this one so put it side by side you can see that that is that's gonna be the same angle so that's the angle you want that's the angle you want so I'm going to go ahead and finish plastic welding it and make it look all nice and shiny like that.
cut my plastic welder off. I'm done with the plastic welding and you can see that this turned out pretty nice. It's got the same angle on it as the first one. Let's see, just to compare. Same exact angle. So that's what it'll look like when I'm finished. This is what it looks like right after you get done with the plastic welding. And there's definitely some craftsmanship that's involved, you know, it's a lot of work, but you can see that if you take your time with it, I mean, I'm pretty sure I was doing this for like an hour, but um, you've seen on the time lapse that, you know, you can just mold it. You're just pushing it and molding it and trying to put the two plastics together until you make one plastic. So uh, I'm going to actually sand this down real quick. The reason why I want to sand this down is because you want to get all the loose pieces off of the top. If there's any holes in there, you want it to fill up with the JB weld. It's just going to make it bond better. That's my secret. So, uh, yeah. So, I have my Dremel here. And I just have like a little thing on here. You want to make sure where safety glasses. I'm doing this. So now that once you get to this point, this is the most important part. So what I would do is I would go and try this out. I'm not going to try this out because I already have the angle that I know I need. But if you're making this and you don't have the same angle I do, you want to try it before you put all that JB Weld and stuff on there. But you can see that I got it grinded down and you can see all those little holes and stuff. That's where it's going to break if, if, uh, if it does break. So you might have to... Um, do a little bit more plastic welding and grinding down before you start to use the tool but this thing is solid it's not going anywhere and then whenever I put the JB weld in there it's gonna fill all those holes up and give it an even more uh, better bond in my opinion but yeah so this is the most important part and I feel like I did a little bit better job on this one than I did on this one so we'll see how it turns out after I put the JB weld on it um, I'm super happy with my welds and I'm super happy with the way it's starting to turn out but yeah so that's how you do the handle part and like I said this is the most important part so now I'm gonna go ahead and um, make sure I blow all the little particles off I've already wiped it off really good with my squeegee life towel and then uh, now that this is cooled off I know I don't need my plastic welder anymore I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off but again, if, um, if I was just going to be trying this out right now to see if my angle's right, I would plastic weld and try to fill all those holes in as much as possible. You want the best grip, you know, so you got right here and all up in here. I would worry about, I wouldn't worry about up in here. All this doesn't really matter because all this is one solid piece. But, um, like I said, this is the most important part. So now it's, it's ready to go. We'll compare the two. You can see that is the same exact angle. So, all right, so now I'm gonna put some JB Weld on here and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna mix it up. So yeah, you wanna make sure while you already have some JB Weld, you'll have a little bit left over probably to make sure you put it on the ends here and on the center to make sure that this is stabilized because this is gonna be the three points that break if anything's gonna break. Um, while you're using this and you don't want anything to break in the field So I would go ahead and just 
wrap this all up and uh, I can show you an example of one I already have done. So when I get finished, I want it to look like this. You can see it's very smooth, sealed up. You don't want to run water through this for about eight hours, six to eight hours. So do this the day before you're going to try to use it. Um, but you can see I've already used this one and it hits the edges and it works just fine. But I'm pretty rough on my tools. So this one already broke once on me and I just fixed it. And then I covered up the middle right here to create more holes here to, for more pressure. But that's on my, my other uh, rinse bar setup that I did, the modification. And you want to make sure to get you some good gloves. You can use the Diamond Grip Micro Flex. These have been the best glo gloves in my opinion. I get the powder free uh, latex examination gloves. And these just seem to work out really well for me. I get the extra large. I have really big hands and they work great. But these are very strong and durable. They're not just going to bust right through. But you want to make sure you have something like, uh, something like this whenever you're dealing with this. You don't want any cheap gloves because this stuff uh, hardens pretty quick. So it's a uh, one to one part ratio here. So you would put, you know, how much ever of this that you put on here is how much you need to put on this. And then as soon as you start mixing it up, you only got a few minutes to be able to put it and apply it to the things that you need before it starts to dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it. And you wanna make sure you get a little piece of cardboard that you can just kind of toss and throw away and cut you another little spot out that you can use to wipe on to your tools and you can pack it in to things with this little piece, you know, and so on and so forth. So that's what you wanna do. Um, and then that's, that's it for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up real quick. Now, if you want to make this dry up a little bit uh, less, like not as fast, use a little bit less hardener. If you want it to dry quicker, because you want to be able to use the tool today or something, then you want to put a little bit more hardener in there. A lot of people won't tell you that, but I learned a lot of this stuff in the auto body industry. That's how I learned how to use some of this stuff. So then you want to take, I got an old piece of hose, but you want to take something to mix this up. You want to mix this up very, very well. So I'm going to go ahead and start mixing it up right now but you wanna mix it up very, very well. And it's gonna start turning a little bit gray because you're using black and white. But you wanna make sure that it's mixed up very, very well. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, I'll set that to the side. And then first I'm gonna go ahead and do this part. So you just wanna take your cardboard and then you'll be able to glop it on there pretty well. Okay. And you can get up in those little cracks pretty well. That's why you want to use a piece of cardboard, something that's flat, something that's going to work. And you just pack it in those little holes. That's normally what I'll try to do first, just go ahead and pack it in those little holes. You see right here. Pack it in there and then smooth it out. You just need a thin layer. You don't need a whole lot. You're just doing this to make it look good and to bond a little bit more. Just gives a little bit more support. So, okay, I'll pack those holes in there just to make it look good. I mean, that part, it's not really where the support is. Um, but like I said, you don't have very long, so you want to make sure that you're molding this stuff pretty quick. Okay, go ahead and mold the top. And then it looks like the bottom, the side's going to be pretty easy. try to form it the best you can with the uh, 
with the piece of cardboard because you're not going to be able to form it later. Okay, it's getting to the point where it's about to start drying pretty quickly. Just trying to pack it in these little spots. And you can do whatever else you want with your finger. That's another good way to get it real nice and smooth. But when it gets to doing too much dry, it's not going to work with your finger very well to try to smooth it out. If you're trying to fill some of those holes in, you want it to look good, then go ahead and do it now. And then it's about to be drying real quick, so I'm going to try to throw some on my rinse bar while I wait on that. Okay, so. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just wrap this all the way around. And then that took care of all of that. Again, this is just to reinforce this piece here to make sure it doesn't break off so it's not as crucial that you get everything all sealed up but when it dries it turns out really nice and looks really nice all right it's starting to dry up now and uh, that's all done and like I said I already did those ends see if I can get a little bit more of this in there just be a little bit more slower with it when it starts to dry but you want to kind of leave it alone but when it dries it'll settle so if it looks all stupid like that when it dries it'll be smooth cool so I got both of those done and then uh, I normally try to wipe this off and use it again if I can but if not, it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so now we'll throw away this because this is already drying. Okay, so after you wait about six to eight minutes, you're gonna get more of a result like this. It's gonna be that color. So yeah, we'll go ahead and wait a few minutes to see how it looks and how it turns out it should dry really nicely and then it should look pretty decent look similar to this one and then we'll start putting all the pieces on um, from there because this will take this will be pretty quick to dry too like I said the ends were already done so um, I did these at a prior time so I could just lay it down for this video for time's sake but yeah, so just make sure that you put whatever's left over there and you can see that when that was drying, um, now that's already been slicked over. So, perfect. Well, we'll wait about, I'm probably gonna wait 10 more minutes and then we'll start putting all the pieces back on. All right, so while we wait on that to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and start putting the pencil jets in the brush. This is a Tucker hybrid brush. And then here are the, uh, pencil jets that go in so you want to make sure that the shorter end goes in um, I think that you could still do it either way but I, I know that this is the end that goes in the hole so they'll go in there like so I'm gonna go ahead and and push them in with a rubber mallet that way I can get them in So now I'm going to go ahead and put the hose in there. All right. And you can use any kind of hose. I would recommend getting the zero hose. This is just some other hose that I had laying around. I had a hundred foot of, um, I believe it's 
gardener hose. I'm not 100% sure. I think it is. That's been a really long time since I've had it. So, not sure where this hose came from, but it's not a very good hose, but it, um, it kinks up a whole lot. And But I'm gonna use it for this purpose because I think it'll, it'll do just fine right here. So, so here's our brush from the other one just to make sure that we do everything the same. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the Cut the hose probably about right here. It don't have to be like exactly perfect, exactly where this is, but I want to have it very similar because I'm trying to mimic what I've already done. So you can see the hose goes on there pretty nicely. And then I'll cut it right there. Okay. I'll do this one. Okay, right there. And if they won't go, if the hose doesn't want to go on there, just kind of spin it a little bit and it should slide right on there. So, okay, just a little bit longer. There. Perfect. So, like I said the hose doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but you know, and you can trim it up as you go. You want to make sure it's it, it might be and it might need to be a little bit longer um, because you're putting the, these pieces on. So, just kind of give you an idea. This is what came off of the other one. This is what I'm about to create with these and some more blue hoses. So, it just connects on there on there connects there and connects there perfect so that's what I'm about to create on this side I don't like to have my hoses right here very long so you can see it's kind of stiff but the reason why is because I don't want them to kink up for one and for two I want to make sure um, that I have the least amount of stuff going on up here um, just because of the way it looks too it actually will look better and more sleek if you do it a little different now if you wanted to bring these down a little bit further you could cut this but don't cut it too short you're gonna be pulling that back off so I'm gonna be just fine with that. Think that that'll work just fine. So then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and check on my handle and my rinse bar because it should be dry by now. All right, so just make sure you go ahead and remove this before you put it on there. But I'm gonna go ahead and put it on there. It's been about 15 minutes. I mean, it's still gonna be a little tacky, so I wouldn't like do too much to it. I wouldn't try to like touch it a whole lot or anything, but I think it's going to be fine to dry like this. Um, you really want to give it like six to eight hours. Like I said, really, uh, you'll be fine at six before you start trying to run water through it. Because if you try to run, run water through it right now, it might start trying to shoot out a little bit um, right there because it's not 100% cured. So you want to make sure to make sure it's cured before you run water through your rinse bar once you do that little modification with the jb weld and then i'm going to go ahead and put this together all right now that you got it all put together you have the ren tuck mo but now you need to just Put your fine tuning in there. Um, this is gonna work perfect. You see it um, swivels just like you want it to. Like I said, the key is to make sure you stay off of that little line right there, you know, and you'll be fine. Um, so, yeah, swivels on there. So, I'm looking forward to using this bad boy, and I might give it do a giveaway on it I'm not sure if I'm gonna give this away or not I spent like an entire day making this thing so I don't know if I'm gonna give it away or not I might be down if somebody wants to buy it but I'd have to charge like 450 bucks or like $500 for it because how much the handle cost 
how much the brush costs, how much the rinse bar costs, how much the JB Well costs, how much my time costs, how much, you know what I mean, like just the craftsmanship and what I got going on here. So if you want to pay me 500 bucks, I'll be happy to take it from you and I'll send it to you. I don't think I'm going to give it away. I know I said I might give it away, but as of right now, I don't think so. I don't think I want to. So, but there you go. There is the Rain Tuck Mo. I can't wait to use it. We'll go ahead and bring this up a little bit. You do want to bring this up a little bit because you don't want it to be touching your hand and rubbing up against your hand. And you can actually put this behind here if you wanted to. I just like putting it on top because I don't want the hose running below me. But you can just move this around to the other side like so if you wanted to. And then just have it come around the back like so if you wanted to. And then that way you can still do whatever you need to do. You still have the switches on here. Um, but then you're ready to go. And then you can still use it, not in the way. Or you can, like I said, bring it around here. And you can swap all this out by just changing hoses. You know, I'm gonna cut this a little bit shorter so that I can bring it up because I kind of want it facing up here whenever I'm doing it. So I'm going to cut it probably about right here. And believe it or not, that's all of the hose that I just showed you. This is all that is left. Um, I showed you at the beginning of the video how much to use. Here we go. Rentuck Mo is ready to go. All you gotta do is hook in here and you're good. You got switches, you can control your pencil jets or you can uh, control your rinse bar. Turn it off and on as you please. All right, taking another quick look at, look at it. I'm using the Maker Mini today with uh, the Ren Tuck Mo that I made on the video for you guys. Everything's all dried. I'm gonna be able to hook it, hook it up here and just use it on a couple windows just to kind of demonstrate what I've learned on it so far. So I hope you all enjoy. All right, so here's the Ren Tuck Mo you just saw me build. I'm just gonna show you a couple quick tips on it, on how to use it. Um, this is with using it with a pole, a smaller pole. A lot of times you'll, you'll run into uh, something that has furniture or something and you can't use your big pole. Uh, you might need to use it by hand or you might need to use it with a smaller pole. I've run into that situation a bunch of times. So um, just wanna give you a couple tips on it. I'll be using the rinse bar on this one, um, but you want to make sure to go side to side whenever you're doing it because when you go up and down like that you're sending water up towards you and then you're also sending water uh, down on your feet uh, it just it's a lot more you get a lot more wet if you don't do it this way so just stick to going side to side and if you're going to go up and down just be real gentle with it because if you're trying to go really hard just go like this you're just going to be soaking wet so you want to make sure that you you just go side to side like so and then you can even go all the way down the glass or you can go this way you know and then that way you don't sling water all on yourself and then of course everybody knows you give it a good rinse and then you should be good to go <clears throat> but there's a lot of reasons why I've made this tool I uh, really like it so far but again you just want to go side to side Side to side is going to be your best friend when using this tool. Because if you're trying to go up and down, it's not going to work in your favor. You want to go side to side. So even when you're using it like this, go side to side. And then if your rinse bar is on the bottom, like I'm using it here, you can kind of push it down. It's not as bad. You already know you're, you know, I'm wearing flip-flops right now. So, you know, I don't want to soak my feet. But I'm not at a job either. I'm done working for today and I'm at my house and I'm just showing you how to use it this tool now that everything's all dried so I'm just gonna give everything a good rinse like normal and then uh, I'm gonna show you what the pencil jets look like but this will save your back too by using this tool it will really save your back because you're not using such a big heavy pole I know I was using a 30-foot pole for residential work um, and 
it's just a lot of work sometimes. And especially if you only have like a one story and you already have all the equipment out because you're doing garage doors or something like that, then, uh, then you know, this really comes in handy. So, as you see, you just use the, uh, that's actually the wrench bar. And then I'll go ahead and cut the pencil jets on. So you can see, that's using both of them. And again, you're gonna soak yourself if you don't go side to side. But if you need a little bit more water when you're doing your scrubbing, um, this is what I would recommend. You could cut both of them on at the same time. And then you can rinse everything down really well. And you can actually rinse like this, and then your window will be clean when you're done if it's a maintained window. Now, if you just want to use the pencil jet, it works just fine too as well. As you know, that's why I recommend getting four of them instead of two. But depending on your pressure, um, you, you're really going to need to have those pencil jets on there and be able to swap them out because if you have a low pressure and you don't have a pump, you're going to need it. You're going to need every bit. So the pencil jets are going to make sure that you can have plenty of pressure uh, coming out, plenty of water coming out all at one time. So again, there's the rinse bar. And if you've got plenty of pressure at a job, I would recommend you use the rinse bar over the other method because you can see there I'm a lot quicker with my rinse than with the four jets and I also think you have less overspray because you've got more coming out of uh, more holes so again I really like this tool that's why I created it you have a whole bunch of different angles that you can set it in but just for the regular angle I would recommend you do it like that and you can uh, put this switch here and then you don't have to have this and you can just do that right there so if you're done with it and you just want to walk around you don't want to have the hose kinked in it you want to undo your uh, pole that's what you would want to do just cut both valves off so you have the different angles here just kind of to demonstrate this sometimes you might need to get behind um, behind something and so you know you might be on a corner you might need to get in there you'll be able to get in there with this say you can't get in there by hand and there's also times where like I, I've had a, a car in front of me right here parked all the way up the garage door and I want to make sure that I can get a good you know scrub down on this but again you're gonna get soaked so you want to make sure to have waterproof shoes I'm wearing flip-flops just to show you that you can use it without soaking your feet because that's what the number one thing if this tool ever gets released or somebody makes something similar that's what people are gonna say they got soaked because you're getting so close to the water itself but uh, there's also places where they'll have uh, <clears throat> they'll actually have like a smaller patio cover but it's not attached to the house it's like a huge tent in their backyard and sometimes you only have just a little bit of room to get in between there uh, to get the window and you might already be using the water fed pole so you just take this out and I don't have a holster or anything for it but I know it works really good on a, ha uh, uh, a, a hammer handle or a hammer holster you can stick it in a hammer holster and it works good like that but you can just pull it straight out get behind that little awning really quickly be able to still use your water fed pole because sometimes water fed pole is just a better better option because sometimes you still can't get in there with a squeegee and with a mop and so with this that's the reason why i have angled it like so so that you can be almost exactly where the brush is if you need to be so you're still going to have to need this much clearance obviously so you would still need to get that much clearance but it's still going to be way easier to use this than trying to uh, pull it out because uh, I've seen people do that and I've, I've actually done it myself but when this is attached to a pole you can just pull it out and you can try to use it that way but I don't recommend it because it's really uncomfortable on your hand and that is why I made it with the Mormon handle so I could really have something to use by hand um, that I was happy with but typically when it's in front of you you're going to want to keep it at the 20 degree that way you can get a good angle um, which was like I said that was my problem if you don't do this angle good enough you won't be able to get that on the glass perfectly you see how that brush is perfectly on the, on the glass and I'm holding it at about waist that's what you want so that's why the angle is so important and that's why you want to make sure that you plastic weld your angle before you put the JB weld on there you want to make sure that angle is perfect and exactly how you want it so a lot of people wanted to buy this from me the beginning but I'm like man you don't want to have to pay what I'm gonna to have to charge to make this thing 
so i hope y'all enjoyed that is the wren tuck mo i really appreciate all the support i hope you enjoy your wren tuck mo if you decide to make one um, if you have any questions feel feel free to reach out send me an email but yeah hope y'all enjoyed we'll see you on the next video peace out